Hi, welcome to my Teresa talk, The Love and Light of Gemini, and we'll follow the talk by a group meditation in the energy of the new moon. Now, the new moon reached its zenith um, this morning in British summertime, uh, just before lunch, 11.52, but we're still in that very powerful energy at the moment, and there's a solar eclipse um happening as well and that just intensifies everything so you may well be feeling that so gemini gemini is a zodiac sign whose energy underlies all the other signs um and that's to do with its association with the second ray of love wisdom which is an energy that pervades and defines and interfuses particularly our solar system uh, so living creatures in our solar system are all working in some way on that ray of love wisdom. So Gemini is the sign of duality, the twins. Uh, it's a sign of opposites that need to come into a synergy, a harmony, a unity. So if you like those quarreling brothers uh, have got to come to love and respect each other and work together for the greatest good, rather than pulling apart, pulling in the opposite directions. Its key note is I recognize my other self, and in the waning of that self, I grow and glow. So this is where there's um, the opposites within each of us, and particularly the self and the other self uh, denote the personality self and the higher self or the soul. And there needs to become a unity between these. Um, and there's a progressive recognition as we move along the spiritual path of the higher self or the soul an increased um, awareness of the um, intuitive messages from the soul and an increasing awareness that there is two parts of us, that we have this ego personality and we have this higher self. And when we come to make decisions, even simple decisions about what we're going to say or how we're going to say something, uh, is it coming from the ego or is it coming from our higher self? And through this recognition of these two opposites, there's a turning toward the light of the soul uh, it can take many, many lifetimes and many challenges and experiences, but there's an eventual blending of these two aspects of our dual nature into one, uh, and we become whole, we become our true self, and there's a recognition at this point of the divinity within each of us, and it's not just an intellectual recognition, it's a knowing that you are a divine spark, you are have God or divinity within you. Uh, and this we call a soul infused personality. So the soul has taken the reins and now is the driving force in that person's life. So the this is the height of the spiritual year in terms of the zodiac. Um, and the reason for that is we've just been through the sort of impetus for the year that was brought forth with the fire energy of Aries and then consolidated in Taurus is now distributed in Gemini. Um, and it's the pure energy. This is when the pure energy of love as expressed by the Christ is said to blend with the illumined mind of the light of the Buddha. And these combine unifying heart and mind and a beautiful fluid synthesis. Uh, and this is really the, the major overall um, note of Gemini of what's behind and lies under uh, the, the standing under the understanding of Gemini. So the principle of love wisdom, like I said, governs conditions and motivates all life and our entire solar system. And this energy unifies all people of spiritual intent as a potent force for healing, growth, evolution, and the establishment of peace, harmony, both within beings and between living beings. 
So it's the second ray is the only ray to pour through Gemini. Uh, and what it does is it creates a pathway for the Christ consciousness to pour forth into the hearts of humanity. And this has the potential individually to lift and raise the vibration and lift the consciousness but probably more importantly at the moment is the collective effect this capacity to lift the collective consciousness so this is often called the festival of unification festival of the christ festival of humanity or goodwill um, and it's said that in higher vibrational realms and planes beyond this physical realm, the Christ recites the last sermon of the Buddha um, to the assembled, what we call hierarchy or higher spiritual beings associated with our planet and brings them into a unity and a synergy to then help humanity for the rest of the year. So it's a potent time. It's a potent time for this distribution of the energy of love. But this is not a personal love. This is an impersonal love. This is pure love and connection. It's divine love. Uh, and this is a love that as humans, we, we're only really, we don't truly understand this love. Um, we saw in the life of Christ an example of this sacrifice this unconditional love for all not just for one person or just like a parent to a child but this unconditional love for all even those who who harm and hurt um, and we don't truly understand this yet but we will um, and we're feeling that the way that we really tune into this now is you may be feeling this yourself is a greater need for fellowship, um, a great, greater need for brother and sisterhood in a world that's increasingly div divided. Uh, I mean, just in this current time, we've got divisions between those who have a vaccine and those who don't, divisions in opinions and scientific data on both. We've got people who want to return to normal life and people who still want to be protected from in the pan pandemic. We've got a clash of an old world with a desire for things to stay the same and a new world desiring change. And we're seeing many old conflicts um, erupting in the world. Many old wars and old conflicts are bubbling up to the surface under the influence of this Gemini energy and this duality um, coming up to the surface for us to see and to rectify and heal and bring into a unity. Um, so goodwill Goodwill is associated with Gemini, and it's said that goodwill is the highest expression of love that we are capable, collectively, as, as a humankind, we're capable of expressing. So you could think of goodwill as love in action. It's the highest form of love we understand at this time. So this um, Gemini rules communication. Okay, very important aspect of Gemini. Its orthodox ruler is uh, Mercury. Mercury is the messenger uh, who can bring forth, where Mercury works with the lower expression of Gemini, um, there's a shallowness to the communication, a fickleness, uh, not direct. You're like, oh, do you mean this or do you mean that? It can be um, in the tarot, the trickster. Um, to divide and conquer, to use words to manipulate, devious diplomacy, double standards, lies and loss of truth and integrity. It can be constant chatter about trivia to mask and distract from the realization of deeper truths. So <clears throat> in its lower expression, Mercury can create an overload of communication, but it's not truthful communication. Um, through Mercury, though, there is the possibility that Gemini rules good communication, good language schools, skills, and Gemini rules the media. Um, okay, so the mass media, the, the communication to all. 
So we live in a time at, at the moment, really where we're overloaded by communication. Um, and in the last year or so, we have witnessed many examples of this lower expression of communication, of Mercury's lower expression. When communication is fear-based or it has <clears throat> intent, not pure loving intent, but intent to control and manipulate. Um, it's really difficult when we have this overload to discern the truth, to know what's genuine communication with integrity. And this is where the conflict, you know, we, whose opinion this person sounds feasible and so does this person and they're saying different things. So how do we find that essence that is the truth? Um, but and and but there is a positive side to the development and communication we've seen through Gemini, and that's the idea that now more than ever there's a possibility of global communication. Within a very short space of time, you can be communicating with like-minded people all over the world. We can come together in meditation and prayer with people all over the world, um, and so. This is a very positive uh, aspect of this communication. And it's serving to accelerate human evolution uh, through this ease of interaction. Um, but it can be a distraction, okay? It can be that um, sort of chatter and trivia when people are, are spend their whole day on social media engaging with trivia not uh, to avoid the truths of what's going on inside of them and their lives in the greater world. It's easy to lose yourself in, in trivia and to, uh, it's a way of coping with uncertainty and overwhelm in the way the world is. Um, it can be fuel for the ego or desire mind. Um, I know uh, my kids were saying that quite often uh, teenagers' self-esteem is totally dependent on how many likes they get for a post in Instagram. And so there's no looking inward for an expression of how they feel about themselves. It's totally dependent on how many people click a button. So we're seeing things like this. So there's the dark side. There's also the dark side of manipulation of information. Uh, a loss of privacy, scams and bots and artificial intelligence and algorithms that are manipulating, trying to get you to open things and what you see and what you click on and what you buy uh, being manipulated. So uh, we're in a real Gemini time, um, a difficult time uh, because we're very aware of the dualities and it's often hard to find that unity, um, that integrity. Now, in terms of the world situation, we have coming up this weekend in Cornwall, the G7 summit. Uh, and this is particularly important and no coincidence that it's happening right on and in the energy of this Gemini new moon uh, and a solar eclipse, which is just raising <laughs> the potential. Um, and two nations, Britain has a Gemini soul. So Britain, uh, you could probably say, has been guilty of much of that lower expression of Gemini over the last little while and is perhaps not lifting up into the higher expression of the Gemini communication. And the USA has a Gemini personality. Uh, so that's where all the trivia and the focus on pa paparazzi and the and Hollywood and the um, <clears throat> also the uh, manipulation and control starts to come through. And so these two nations are pivotal in this G7 summit. But the solar eclipse is also a square to Neptune. Um, and Neptune is another name given for the Christ consciousness, for the Christ energy, for this divine, um, powerful love and goodwill. So there is a potential for a higher ex for the higher expression of Gemini to come through in this um, summit. 
uh, and that would be to access the higher consciousness and bypass all the glamour and all the manipulation and control and get to the heart of what humanity needs from these leaders. And it's something that um, you can do, you can be involved with, and, and many people uh, over the time of a major conference like this, when you're doing your own personal meditation, you can be sending love and light and a desire for the highest good, just imagining it pouring into that conference into the energy of the people attending and unifying and creating a high expression uh, of consciousness as, and action as a result. So I'll bring that into the meditation um, this evening. That's something you can do to help as an act of service. So Mercury is the co-ruler of the fourth ray of harmony through conflict. And this is a major ray uh, governing humanity at this time. It's uh, where we are collectively in our evolutionary journey. We tend to come to harmony through conflict. Um, and the higher expression of Mercury can bring about this harmony through conflict, this bringing together of those polar opposites and finding a common ground that through communication, through integral and through um, communication that is truthful without the manipulation and the propaganda and the lies and the hidden agendas and all of that. Um, the challenge is to use the power of language to unite, to evoke understanding, to evoke compassion, so that the communication is love-based. And that impersonal love, that love and desire for the best uh, for humanity uh, as an act of service. And we know the power of the word um, to create unity of purpose. Uh, harmlessness, right speech leads to right relations, right actions. And you've only got to think back through history to some of the most powerful orators. Um, I think of people like Martin Luther King, Kennedy, um, just comes to mind, Nelson Mandela, some people who, who had this capacity to use the communication and the words and the language for um, bringing out the best in people. And really it's a time where we need that kind of leadership at the moment. And I think it has been lacking. Um, Mercury also rules not just communication between people, but your communication within you. So your inner communication. And this is the communication between your personality and your soul or higher self. And it brings forth the potential for illumination, for understanding, uh, for what stands under, for seeing the truth of something, for this intuitive realization. It also brings the possibility uh, increasingly of mind-to-mind -mind communication that bypasses the need to use language. And this is something that will develop uh, in mankind in the future but the potential is there right now in everybody and um, mercury rules this potential so mercury enables us to lift into the buddhic plane so the buddhic plane is the plane um uh, one of the planes of the higher self that we find the higher self it's a plane of truth of beauty of goodness, of intuitive knowing. Uh, it's that sudden flash of understanding that changes your whole perspective on something and a heart and oh my God moment of pure understanding. Um, the esoteric ruler of Gemini is Venus. Uh, and she acts to spiritually bring this Christ consciousness to illumine human minds uh, and bringing mental understanding through love and compassion. So through coming together in love and compassion, there is greater understanding. 
And through Venus, Gemini becomes the mediator, the synergizer, the antekarana, the rainbow bridge between the personality and the soul. Uh, Venus works beautifully to transmute selfish desire into a desire for the good of all, like those warring twins come together for the good of humanity and service, a desire for brotherhood, for sisterhood, for fellowship. And Venus, the god of love, um, brings together factors within us and between people into the most intimate rapport. Uh, her power is phenomenal. And both Mercury and Venus are coming through Gemini strongly. Um, so the most powerful factor in right speech and a powerful orator, the reason we are moved and that person affects us so much is because they come from a loving heart. They truly desire the best for humanity. And we can feel that. We can feel it in their words and we can feel it in their energy. Uh, and the heart determines our intention. So our intention always comes from the heart. And then the mind conveys the understanding, the illumination. And you can see that the chakra that connects the heart and mind is the throat. And this is the chakra of communication, of truthful communication. So when Mercury and Venus come together in unity, there is an awakening from the unreal to the real a change in perspective, a change in perception. Um, there's, it's like waking up from slumber to an awakened reality of how things really are. There comes This union can bring separation into union with universal truth. In this highest expression, the twins are now inseparable. They're still individuals, but they're united in service to humanity and the greater good. And the rainbow bridge between the soul and the personality is built. So that, that duality has come into a beautiful unity. So Gemini rules all opposites. And, and at this time, those polar opposites will become evident. The clash of the sexes, the harmony or lack of between the masculine and the feminine between people within yourself um, the need for balance in your life um, the clash of the old worldview and an emerging new worldview so mercury and venus working together these two it's like a perfect marriage it's like a wonderful partnership uh, in their highest expression, they enable Gemini to resolve the conflicts, to bring about that harmony through conflicts, both within us. So we got these energies working within us at this time in a powerful way and collectively for all of us. Uh, and so the conflicts within ourselves, and you might find that the conflicts within your life have been coming up. Uh, over this time of Gemini from the full moon to the new moon, uh, you might find that, that, that conflicts between you and others, old conflicts have re-emerged and you're like, oh, here we go again. I thought this was resolved. It's like, no, we're on another turn of the wheel of the spiral. Uh, you're needing to resolve that conflict on a higher level. Um, so for many people, Gemini, I would say, brings a crisis of finding your true place or role in the world. Okay, often, well, I'm torn between this role and that role, between this need and that need, between what I want to do and what others want me to do. And there can be a real conflict. And Gemini very much brings that conflict. Um, up and it's part of the process of soul awakening and soul alignment that process that conflict will bring you eventually into a harmony into a beautiful rhythm with your soul and then there is no more conflict your way becomes it's like the path opens and is clear so the challenge the uh, and crises that arise with increasing soul contact 
um, often lead, it comes about there's a lack of fulfillment in the world. It comes about a feeling that you're seeking something more than just what's out there in everyday life. Um, you become aware that we walk in two worlds and we have an inner world that we uh, contact when we're in meditation or contemplation or perhaps just being in nature. But it's quite a different place to this outer world. And sometimes there's a desire just to retreat into that inner world and, and not deal with this outer world. But we've got to resolve that conflict. We've got to learn to find that inner peace and bring it into the world to create peace. And so we become some start to understand that we are in the world, but not of it. Okay, and it's a very powerful statement. So we're here in the world, but the truth of who we are is not of this world. This world is actually an illusion. The truth of who we are is to be found in our inner world. And this is something that takes many lifetimes. This duality takes many lifetimes to resolve and bring into unity. And it can be the, the cause of much uh, inner conflict uh, within people for many lifetimes. Um, and you seek understanding. This, is, this, this drives a desire to understand who you are. Who am I? To seek understanding, to know the truth. Who am I and why am I here? Um, and the, there comes a crisis when you follow this, this path, this conflict. There becomes a crisis of isolation, perhaps feeling like you no longer fit in the world, uh, questioning really <laughs> whether you really want to. Uh, and this is something that is not always spoken about in spiritual circles, but it is a crisis. Uh, a deep dark night of the soul crisis that that is common amongst people treading a spiritual path and I think it helps to know uh, that this crisis happens to most people at some time along their spiritual path and that really reaching out to others is the key seeking brotherhood and fellowship and sisterhood because there'll be other souls who have walked that crisis that challenge before and can help um, and eventually you come through the crisis of isolation and realize that it doesn't matter because you're here anyway and you were here to do what you're here to do um, so it's very Gemini to seek inner counsel to blend head and heart light and love and a creative expression of who you are uh, through your throat. So silence can be very difficult for Gemini, um, especially the chattering of the monkey mind that won't quieten down, say in meditation is very much a Gemini trait, a lower expression of Gemini. And so there is a need in Gemini to lift to them to that higher expression, that inner communication with the silence of a loving heart. Uh, the stillness of an illumined mind. And then that love and light, the Christ and the Buddha um, come together and, and create that awareness of your unity of being, your wholeness. Um, I describe this awareness as a feeling like you've come home. You've come home to yourself. Um, so both Venus and Mercury in our solar system stand as light bearers to the earth okay so they're actually helping us um venus especially is what we call a sacred planet you could say planetary wise a more advanced planet spiritually than earth she's like uh, our alter ego helping us uh, our guide and both of them um, take in the extra light from the sun, step it down, transmute it and pour it into our planet to help us. Mercury brings the light and Venus brings the love. So this is where we talk about lighted love. And this dual stream pours into all of the kingdoms in nature. So not just into the human kingdom, but into the animal, the plant, the mineral kingdom um, to 
to evoke that positive change. So in the Great Invocation, Gemini pertains particularly to the fourth stanza. When we say from the center, which we call the race of men, let the plan of love and light work out. This is these dualities, these two powerful forces of Gemini coming together. May it seal the door where evil dwells. And what that means is um, you can think of it as a door, you know, you're shutting out the darkness or you're shutting out evil, but really is what it is, it's to spiritualize matter, to create um, an awakening or a, a, an evolution on our planet as a being into a sacred planet. So when that door is sealed, the planet becomes sacred and it's almost like the soul of the planet is anchored deep. And the role, the, the, our planet as a being can't do that on her own. This is the role of humanity. Um, this is, the, especially those that are spiritually attuned, what we call the new group of world servers, which is anyone who is responding to a soul uh, vibration uh, in their life. And this is the sealing of this door is the lifting of the consciousness of all, the development of brotherhood, of right relations, lifting into the light and the full expression of a loving heart. Um, so the keynote of Gemini was to mention to grow and to glow. And so this is to grow and glow in the beautiful blending of an illumined mind that understands and a compassionate, loving heart that forgives, seeks unity, not separativeness in all aspects of human living. So it's to find that harmony through the conflicts and challenges uh, and bring in the light, that loving light. Um, so hopefully that gives you a bit of a flavor of the power of Gemini and particularly the power at this time, if we can tune into the energies of that higher expression of Gemini, which is what we do when we meditate together. Um, when we come into group med meditation, it's a impersonal love. You do it because inside of you, there is that, that love for humanity, that desire for things to be better, that desire for peace and harmony on this planet and for all who, who live here. So on that note, I want to move into um, the group meditation. And we'll have an opportunity if you have questions and things um, about this after the meditation. So when we... Um, say this affirmation of love together we are bringing our compassionate loving heart together with our mind both within ourselves but also collectively with it, with each other and this is the power of this affirmation so just repeating with me uh, in the center of all love i stand from that center, I, the soul, will outward move. From that center, I, the one who serves, will work. May the love of the divine self be shed abroad in my heart, through my group, and throughout the world. So get yourself comfortable. Um, sitting reasonably upright, your feet on the floor. Uh, it's better if your feet are not crossed and hands resting comfortably in your lap. Close your eyes and just imagining, just imagine you are sending a connection down into our beautiful planet. We're grounding our energy either through your feet or through the root chakra at the base of your spine.
And now I want you to let everything that has gone before go. We're going to come into an awareness of this present moment. So just be aware of your body sitting on the chair. Be aware of the clothes on your skin. Now take this awareness to your sense of hearing and just allow the sounds to come in. Just listening to the sounds in the room. Now take this awareness to your breath and just watch the breath as it comes into your body and watch it as it leaves. Just allow this gentle focus on the breath to take you inward. Feel your body beginning to relax. With each breath, just take the breath a little deeper. And imagine you are opening a channel down through the very center of your body. And especially an opening at the heart center. So space between the sternum and the spine. And now allow this opening feeling to travel down through your body, to the very center of your body, until it's comfortable to breathe down into your belly. Nice, slow, deep breaths. And just let your mind rest on the breath. And let it take you down into a place of stillness within you. Allow thoughts to simply pass. Come into your mind, pass through. Returning to the breath whenever your mind is distracted. Returning to the breath with loving kindness. Now bring your awareness to the center of your chest and just breathe into this heart center. Imagine your heart filling with light and love and gratitude, opening the center like a flower bud opens into full bloom.
Now visualize white or violet purple or gold light coming down from your higher self through the crown of your head and down through the major energy centers, chakras in your body. Bringing them into perfect vibration perfect vertical alignment and interplay. Opening that rainbow bridge between your personality and your higher self. And imagine that your heart acts as a vessel to receive and distribute this lighted love throughout your body. So imagine your whole physical body filling with this purifying, cleansing, healing light. Vivifying and strengthening your physical body, bringing health and well-being. Allow it to calm your emotions. to bring clarity to your mind. Now as your physical body fills with lighted love, allow it to begin to flow out into the etheric body or energy body or aura that surrounds your physical body. So you are filled with lighted love. Now imagine it is flowing out from you into your home to those you live with. To all living beings in your home. Now it's radiating out further into your neighborhood, your street. Out into your community. Touching the hearts and minds of all. Either consciously or unconsciously. Continue to radiate this lighted love pouring in through your crown, distributed from your heart, out into your town or city. Imagine that your light is connecting with the light from all those joining us in this group meditation, whether they're joining us live or via the recording. And allow this lighted love to fill our nation. And I want you to imagine that it is concentrated in Cornwall. And it's preparing the energy for the G7 summit. 
lifting all who are involved up into the highest self, to the highest expression of consciousness, both within them and in the unity between those who are coming together in the summit. So that it is for the highest good of all. Now continue to radiate this lighted love out into this part of the world. into this hemisphere, to the southern hemisphere, so that together we encompass the whole of our world and fill it with lighted love. Imagine we are joining together with all groups of people who are working with the energies of light and love, especially on the new moon. Now see our planet as if from space and see this lighted love surrounding her like an aura. See lots of dots of light all the people who are working with this energy, creating a blazing light surrounding our planet, united in a brotherhood. And see this beautiful aura of lighted love flowing down into our planet healing her, lifting the consciousness of our planet as a being, restoring the balance in nature, bringing harmony through the conflict, restoring the air, the waters, so they're clean and pure restoring her protective ozone layer, allowing the whole planet to be healed and harmony returns. See all the animal and plant life flourishing. And see this lighted love flowing into the hearts and minds of all people. Bringing peace, igniting goodwill and right relations within individuals, between individuals. bringing healing within families, communities, and nations, between nations, bringing unity. Lifting our awareness and the collective consciousness so that we can learn to live in peace and harmony with all See these energi energies unifying, eliminating all divisions within humanity, healing, transforming human consciousness through the power of right speech, truthful communication to establish right human relations.
Continue to hold a space in your heart for this energy and let it radiate out. Now I invite you to use the great invocation. And this world prayer has the power to distribute the energies of light and love. We can say it together either silently or out loud. But as you say each stanza, repeat them with conviction and have a slight pause between to imagine the words being played out. And imagine this world prayer acting as a link between the inner spiritual realities and humanity. And creating a channel through which divine love and light and purpose can flow into human consciousness. From the point of light within the mind of God. Let light stream forth into the minds of men. Let light descend on earth. From the point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into the hearts of men. May Christ return to earth. From the center where the will of God is known, let purpose guide the little wills of men, the purpose which the masters know and serve. From the center which we call the race of men, let the plan of love and light work out. And may it seal the door where evil dwells. Let light and love and power restore the plan on earth. Namaste. When we sound the three Oms at the end of the Great Invocation, that is the point at which we've brought our hearts and minds and wills together. And that is the poor point of outpouring that enables the distribution. I always think of the reciting of those alms as my being connecting into that second ray of love wisdom uh, and vibrating with that energy, with that pure intention to love wisely and wisdom applied lovingly throughout 
our solar system. So really the great invocation has incredible power, but the capstone on that power is the ohms that we repeat because the om is the sound of creation. Um, and so it gives the words even greater power when we uh, connect in that way. So thank you um, for this evening. It's been lovely. If you have any questions, just let me know. If you've got any comments, let me know. Or you can pop them in the chat. Um, So go and enjoy the rest of the new moon energy. Remember that the energy builds for two days before the day of the new moon. And then it is also very active in the two days after. So there's this wonderful five-day opportunity. Um, so whatever tonight's talk has sort of sparked in you, uh, you've now got two days to work with that on an inner level. Uh, you've got the wonderful support of the Gemini energy and it is heightened by that eclipse and that square to Neptune and that is a very positive influence. Uh, and let's let's hold in our hearts a, a hope and a trust that um, both individually and collectively we will, lift up into that higher consciousness and invoke uh, positive transformation in our world and the way that we live. So thank you for being involved. Thank you for bringing your lovely energy. Namaste.